Hello, and today's video, exciting as it is, is how to make a set of secondhand cranks that might have been heavily abused or used by people who have strange feet positions on pedals that usually wear their paint off the cranks. Um, on mountain bikes this is more prevalent than road bikes because a lot of people use flat pedals so your foot position isn't the same normally every time you take your foot on and off the pedals where it is with cleats. Um, they tend to stay in the same position when you're clipped in so you can avoid having arm rub on your pedals. Um, as you can see in this particular picture here, the state of the cranks isn't that bad, but this, these XT cranks have been quite heavily abused on the end of the crank arms. Um, it's obviously had rock strikes where the pedals have crashed into rocks due to clearance issues. And also it's got a fair bit of heel rub and a couple of nicks and dents basically in the aluminium. Um, not quite sure what those are caused by. They can be caused by a number of things like rocks thrown up. Um, just generally speaking, if you lean your bikes against other people's bikes as well, I know it's especially on club runs, that really annoys me. If somebody puts their bike against the wall, then you, before you know it, you've got two or three other bikes leaning up against it. That's a massive no-no for me. Um, I don't even like leaning my bikes against the wall, to be honest with you. The levers end up with marks on them. Um, I'm just very, very careful. Um, you can always end up with saddle marks as well on the sides of the wall where the saddle on its soft leather sits against the wall and people move the bike from side to side and before you know it, that's worn away as well. It looks horrible. Anyway, this is for um, a set of cranks. I bought these for my Monster Cross bike. Um, it's got a 9-speed triple on it at the moment, and I wanted to put a 10-speed triple on it just to keep it aligned and put the old 9-speed triple back on the mountain bike when it came off. Um, as I said, these cranks have come with various marks, and um, the first thing I'm doing here, as you can see in the video, uh, 400 grit wet and dry, um, use it wet, um, remove the imperfections, the scratches and other bits and pieces with the wet and dry. Um, you can do it like this and if you use a rubbing block like I'm using here um, you can make sure you don't cut grooves into the aluminium because it's quite soft um, but I'm getting rid of here at the tips of this you can see it's um, there's quite a lot of marks on here so the rubbing down is essential to get a nice smooth finish on the cranks um, towards the end of the, the video you'll see there's a surprise sting in the tail basically when I've done this but it's a surprise so I'll keep that till the end. Um, these cranks arrived with a couple of issues on them. Um, in this particular part here I don't actually realise that the main uh, chain ring on this has had a, a dig. I think it might have hit something um, to be honest with you, I'm not quite sure what's caused it anyway, but it's got a slight bend to it, which I discovered after I'd done all the paintwork, etc, etc, and put it back on the bike. Now, the reason I'm not removing the rings on this, I wanted this to be a quick job, so I could show you just basically how easy it is to do this kind of work very quickly to make the bike far more um, palatable aesthetically. Um, as opposed to leaving it with marks and I, I just hate marks and, and rub marks and damage to paintwork anyway I'm, 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 I don't know I just can't stand it anyway as you can see I'm rubbing this thing down um, I didn't remove the crank rings I did try to remove the crank rings but I think the bolts are corroded and for the for this video it was only ever going to be a quick job to make it look um, a lot better um, and I know I'm going to have to drill these bolts out at some stage to replace the chain rings, but since they don't need replacing at the moment, um, I didn't deem it worthwhile doing. But uh, eventually they will be drilled out and replaced with some uh, decent bolts, new bolts again. Um, a lot of people, when they assemble these, these cranks, especially with new chain rings, don't put anything on the bolts. And you have an issue sometimes with the bolts when they get... Um, when they've been in there for many, many years, they, they tend to corrode and then you can't get them out very easily and the easiest thing to do on them sometimes is to just drill them. Um, occasionally you can heat them up with a hot air gun and release them. 
Um, but it, for me, it's far easier. Just get the drill out, just drill the things out, remove them. It's a lot easier. Um, but as you can see, for this particular one, I just wanted to mask it. Um, now, if you look at the bits that I'm rubbing down here on this angle, there's some uh, nicks and, and, and small dents in it. Um, the wet and dry is doing that. You can go to um, rougher grades of wet and dry, but the 400 on aluminium is more than adequate, to be honest with you. And on this particular paint job, I'm only doing the faces, the outward faces. So it's the front of the crank where you can see with the XT decal and the tops and the round part around the pedal where I'm sanding down here that's going to get done. Now, when rubbing down, try to keep the strokes as even as you can. Try to make them as round as possible when you're doing round, round bits. Um, generally speaking, if you're using wet and dry on the surface, you do it in small circular motions. Um, but that's not very easy to do on this particular one because there's not a great deal of area here to work with. So I'm using, well, just linear um, uh, action really on it. Try to remove as much or try to dull the paint as much as you can when you're wet and drying. If there are no marks, nicks or dents in it, if you dull the paint, that's enough for the primer um, to stick to. But if you've got dents or scratches in it, you can go a little bit deeper with this particular uh, grade of wet and dry. And at 400, it will go through quite quickly as well. So you don't have to put too much uh, legwork in it, so to speak. Now on the non-drive side there, I've just taken a look at that. There's a few marks on that one there. I'm just cleaning it up, getting it used to. Um, well, as you can see here, I've removed a lot of the paint here, so I'm just cleaning it up and getting it ready. Now, uh, the item's been dried a little bit. Uh, there's no water on it. I try to remove as much of the dirt and water you can with the cloth, which I've already done with the one. As I say, on the back sides, the, the crank arms here, I'm just masking it. I don't want to paint these bits. Um, if I ever decide to paint again, this bike, I'll probably take the crank arms off, take the bolts out, etc. And do the crank arms with the complete frame so I get a, a unified look to the bike. But in this particular instance, I just wanted this done quickly because I want these cranks on so I can remove the other cranks and put them on the mountain bike. So masking's got on there. I've got a very sharp blade in my hand, which is quite possibly the sharpest blade that I've ever owned. Um, so I'm being very careful with this particular one, but it cuts through the uh, masking tape like a laser. Um, there is just literally no drag on it. But as you can see here, just carefully marking everything just to get a nice line on the inside. I just want the outside surfaces um, to have color on them. So just being a little bit careful with the knife, and I, you'll see me in a second, I'll run the edge of the knife down the um, edges of the masking tape to give a nice even line, um, basically. But having got to the masking stage now, it's important. Paintwork on anything, the most important thing you can do to make paintwork look good is all in the preparation actually applying the paint itself isn't i'd say if you i'm only using spray cans in this particular one but i've got um spray guns and airbrushes and and other bits and pieces that i use as well um but once you've got the pressure right and you know the volume of paint coming out of there you can i, I would suggest if you've got it experiment with it first but with spray cans you haven't got any Thing that you can really alter apart from the distance that you're spraying at um, so it's not so much to worry about but the preparation on whichever way you're going to paint is the most important thing get the surfaces nice and flat make sure there's no imperfections in it and when it comes to spraying just take your time and it will give you a great finish if you've done all the preparation right. If you haven't done the preparation right after the paint's dried, you'll see all sorts of marks and things that you probably didn't notice. You might see dirt in it, you might see dents or well, various other imperfections. 
you really need to check it out before the paint goes on at the primer stage. But as you can see, taking my time here with some uh, masking tape, and it is essential, as I say, to get these bits and pieces right. So I'm, I'm taking rather a lot of time to do this, uh, uh, but it is, it is time well spent. You can see the, the dry side of the crank just sitting there, but there's quite a lot of paint removed on this. Now, sometimes if you've got a black finish and it hasn't rubbed through to the metal, you can actually quickly cover um, the black surface with further black. If you've got a satin black, a gloss back or a matte black or so. Um, if it's black and you're painting over it, as long as the surface is, is clear, cleared of its imperfections or dirt or dust, you can paint black over black. It doesn't matter what it, it doesn't matter what it is, as long as the paint's been rubbed down the original paint, you can get away with using that. In this particular instance, once it's masked, I will be using a high build primer, um, which covers a lot of imperfections. If you've got some major marks on it, the high build primer works quite well. Um, sometimes for an even better finish, once I've done the high build primer. I will rub down again with a um, a less aggressive wet and dry like thousand grit or so just to get the, the surface finish even smoother. Um, in this particular instance I won't be doing that because it's not that important for the speed of the job that I'm trying to do. Um, as I said I wanted this to be a fairly quick job so as you can see here this entire paint job I think was done within two hours. And that includes um, waiting for the paint to dry as well. <laughs> as I say, it wasn't going to be a, a long job. In between coats, ideally you want the paint to be dried enough so it's just gone tacky again before you put another coat on. Um, in that case, if you don't put too much paint on, um, you'll get a really good finish because the paint sticks better if it's got a little bit of stickiness to it uh, for the second coat. Um, you can leave it to dry as well, it doesn't really matter. You'll get pretty much the same finish, but you won't get, you won't have issues with runs and things unless you're really putting it too thickly on, um, if it's a little bit sticky as well. Although, having said that, if you do put it thickly on uh, for the second or third coat, sometimes the thinners in the paint that you're spraying can soften the whole lot and cause a run. So, just be a little bit careful. Always put more coats on light coats rather than one or two thick heavy coats you'll get a much better finish with it that way now as you can see here more masking tapes going on on the drive side um, going over the crank wheels to make sure that i cover everything that i can on the cranks now it's very difficult there's a curved area where the crank joins the axle as you can see there and that's really difficult to get an even um, and even masking all the way around it. So you've got to be you've got to spend a little bit of time doing that. And sometimes it's easier to try and do it a bit like a 50 pence piece. So you've got angles in it. But if you have enough of it going over the round section of arm there, you can then cut it with a knife to get that round finish that you want. Um, here you can see I'm trying to mess around with the uh, bolts and I'm just about to discover that the bolts are not coming off easily. Um, they're just not turning at all. Um, a lot of the time when this kind of thing occurs, it can be a, dis a bit disheartening to try and remove these and find out that they've actually corroded together. Um, I used to worry about it a few years ago. Oh no, I'm not going to be able to change these. They're all corroded and now the Allen heads or the, the star heads in them are just, they're just turning. Um, but I don't worry about it anymore. They're just really easy to drill out if you've got the right drill bit size. Um, so it's not a problem other than the fact that it was slowing me down doing the job. Um, and you can get so many different versions of um, chain ring bolts and things nowadays as well. You can get anodized ones, you can get titanium ones, you can get steel ones. But to be honest with you, you're not going to notice the difference 
if you're going to steel. Weight-wise, they're a little bit heavier, um, but they make it a damn sight easier for changing chain rings. So if you're a racer um, doing cross-country events and you've got a, a double chain ring or a, even a single chain ring, really, and you're, you're likely to change chain rings for different courses, I would suggest probably um, if you can get hold of the steel ones, it's a worthwhile investment. Um, or you can go aluminium wise as well, but there's nothing worse than going to an event finding a chain ring needs to be changed and you've knackered one of the bolts basically as you're removing it or putting it back in. Um, whereas the steel ones, that's just not an issue. You, you, you won't have an issue doing that. So that's something to bear in mind if you change. Uh, chain wheels for the courses and things. Um, as I say, in the middle of nowhere with your toolkit and one set of bolts is not a good time to discover that you've just sheared one of them off and the chain rings flapping out on one of the forearm spiders. Um, yeah, anyway, at this point, as you can see, getting a bit frustrated with it all. Oh, bloody hell. Not a single bolt, I think, um, started to turn on this one, which is the most disheartening bit which makes me think that when these bolts were put on um, they might have been locked tighter than which you definitely don't need to do on chain ring bolts and a lot of people over tighten over torque um, the bolts when they put them on they really they only need about four four pound feet if that to put these things on um, but some people go absolutely mental with them a bit like stem bolts actually that's another one uh, where people put stems on handlebars and sometimes they're talked up so much you can actually crush the bar um, or the the grips mountain bike handle grips I've seen before where people over tighten those as well uh, if you've got carbon bars on there it can cause problems um, but generally speaking you don't a lot of bike components it's worthwhile investing in a torque wrench if you don't know quite what you're doing and just sticking to the manufacturer's torque settings you'll be surprised at how low uh, torque wise they are anyway here you can see me i've decided mm, not going to do that anymore i'm just going to tighten these things up um, and carry on <laughs> masking everything up by this stage definitely given up on that and it, as i say from the outset with this particular paint job for these cranks it was never going to be a proper paint job for them it was just designed to clean them up make them far more presentable on the bike when I put them on there um, it's something for the future I might be doing I'll probably color code um, I always say this actually I'll probably color code things like the handlebar stem seat post etc but then I never do um, all I worry about is when I'm painting a bike is just painting the frame with the fox. That's it. Um, I have done on previous bike builds before when there have been aluminium components like handlebars. I had an old Pinarello Treviso that I did up which was a 1980s spec racing bike and um, that was painted in a custom paint job with um, candy apple paints with some vines going up and down the tube with leaves and flowers on them. Um, that was quite a nice paint job. But everything on that bike, the seat posts, um, the stem, the cranks, the derailleur, they were all highly polished aluminium. I spent ages polishing those. Um, and it looked absolutely fantastic with those items polished. Um, but as I say, I always think to myself, do you know what, I'll paint the stem and the handlebars in matching colour, but then never actually get around to it. For some strange reason, I always manage to find something else to do with them. Um, it's not necessarily a, a, a bad thing. I mean, sometimes in black um, or grey or silver, the, these sort of items can look quite good. Um, but it's something I will be doing. I've got another build that I might be doing, which is a 26er hardtail mountain bike. I may well do the frame in a, I haven't decided with the colour yet, but I may well do it in that. Um, and I might do the stem handlebars and some other bits and pieces like crank etc in the same colour as the frame or the same effect of the frame. Now as you can see here, the first coat of primer's already gone on these um, uh, bike 
and I've time-lapsed it and cut a little bit out. The, the primer's had about 15 minutes to dry here, and I've gone to the first coat of black paint. Now, the black is a gloss black. Um, I've decided to go... I, I'm not a big fan of satins or mattes, to be honest with you. I, I prefer a paint job to look like it's shiny and new. So I tend to go for glosses when I go here. So as you can see, the paint's going on quite quickly. A um, couple of swipes of it, and I'm just going down the edge of the crank now at the bottom um, to make the job right. Um, this black covers pretty much everything. Um, the coverage is very good, so you don't have to worry about going too mental with the amount of coats on there. Um, I'm going to leave it to dry now, and I come back in a few minutes to put the next coat on, uh, which is here, strangely enough. Um, put the waiting time out, attacking it again with another coat on there. And here we go, a second coat. I should have picked this up first really, but um, as I said, impatience was creeping. Just wanted the job done as quickly as possible. And at this point here, I'm on the wrong side of it to paint it. But sometimes it's easier to hang up components like these when you're painting them. Uh, when I've done frames before, the frames hung one way, the forks hung another way, so you can get to every every part of it as you're painting it. Now the drive side arm of the crank is a lot easier to hold because you're shielded, luckily enough, by the masked up chain rings here. So this was a much easier part to actually paint off off a off a hanger. Um, but as I say, sometimes for components like this, it's easier to hang them up and paint them. Um, you can get to every part of it and you get a much more even paint stroke going as well. So this particular part has been given enough time to dry. Now, this is the bit that... <laughs> surprise coming here, I don't know whether any of you have spotted it, but I decided that I was going to do some fancy purple decals which I'm going to hand cut. Um, basically what I've done is I've used some grease proof paper to make a pattern and I've had a couple of stabs at it and by the time I've done a couple of stabs here I've kind of got the effect of what I need for the decals anyway so I gave up with the template and just decided to hand cut these. Um, now everything about the XT decal is all straight lines anyway so I'm using a straight edge and essentially what I'm doing is I'm cutting it by freehand to make it fit. Now, the decals are done in vinyl, uh, which I got from a good friend of mine, which is quite local, uh, Justin Graphics. Now, this stuff is like a 3D effect purple. Yeah, it's almost like a carbon fibre finish in the, the purple vinyl. So I'm very carefully, with a very, very sharp knife, cutting out the design, as you can see here, to place on the crank arms. Um, as I said, what I wanted with these is to put them on and essentially... Once they're on there, I'm going to clear coat them on so they've got a, a, a layer of, of clear paint, basically, for want of a better word, um, to cover them over and give them some sort of protection. Now, this takes a while to cut them, but it, it, again, it's worthwhile doing the time on here. Um, in the background at the top there, you can see the visor from my Bell commuter helmet. Um, I've actually tried to put some... Um, tinted tinted uh, uh, see-through um, vi uh, visor color onto that and that will be another project for one time but I got so fed up of it because it just would not even with a heat gun I couldn't get it to bend in the right directions for these things without it wrinkling um, so I gave up anyway back to the cranks um, as you can see the decals going on now, by now, the, the actual cranks, I, I think, are looking quite no, nice. The, the paint's gone on properly. Um, the effect is looking very, very good. And I'm quite pleased with this. All I've got to do now is put the decals on and apply the clear coat to get the job finished. Um, at this bit, placing the, the, the decals on it. And at this point, I didn't realize I'm actually sticking the decals on upside down um, essentially with the with the, the XT decals if you've got the drive side crank in its sort of 
three o'clock position the XT should be at the top of the crank arm um, as you can see in here if you put it in the, put it in the three o'clock position it's in the bottom of the crank arm so I didn't realize that that's one of the the problems when you're trying to rush something uh, you make stupid mistakes um, but I'm, to be honest with you, I'm not that fussed about it. It still looks a lot better than it did. And it's a custom finish that suits the actual bike it's going on. So I, I, I can live with it. Um, I, I know it. A lot of people will probably never, ever notice it. Uh, but I know it's there. It, it's, it, it's not that much of a worry, to be honest with you. Um, but as you can see, the finish there is looking quite good on the decals. So I'm pretty pleased with those. Um, I think I'll try and move the camera down to get a better, better view of it, but unfortunately it's just not ideal. But you'll see it later on the, in the finished product, and I think it's um, I, I think it looks good anyway. I'm quite pleased with it. it. As I say, it looks a huge improvement over how it was. Now, here comes the clear coat bit. Now, I've used a... I can't remember. This is a cellulose clear coat, I believe, on this one. I think all the paints are a cellulose-based paint because they've got that, that nice, rich smell about them. Um, now, the clear coat seems to go on quite thickly, so you've got to be really, really careful with this stuff because you can make it run if you're a bit too generous with the clear coat. So I'm trying to take it easy here and make sure I get it on nice and even. Um, that bit's pretty much done and the drive side is now coming up I think I do the edges first here which is probably the right way to do it and then do the face um, lastly to get that nice finish on them but as you can see it's short sharp um, sprays here as I say the ultimate thing would have been the, to hang these up but I couldn't be bothered to set it up and also if I have to set them up out in the garden, you've also got the added impetus of the wind. Now this is the finished crank arms, as you can see, they look pretty good. Now they've got the clear coat on them, and the decals are flushed into the clear coat, um, so they shouldn't be peeling. But as you can see, the, 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 the finish is looking quite good. It's a huge improvement on how it looked, um, so I'm quite pleased with those. It suits the bike and it suits the, um, the the crank arms as well. They don't look too out of place or, or overdone, uh, which is <laughs> unusual for me, to be honest. I prefer to have them over the top, usually. But these are nice sort of subtle, and it's a, it's a change from the, the norm for me. Um, but everything's on there. All that's required now is to put the bolts back in for the non-drive size crank arm. Um, I already checked the threads to make sure they were good for pedals so that's pretty good but as you can see it's quite a nice job and I'm, I'm quite pleased with it although if any of you have the um, uh, comments to make on it apart from the decals being upside down I know I know I don't need to have that pointed out but as you can see I'm pleased with it and that's all there is thanks a lot if you want to subscribe that will be absolutely great I'm going to be making videos for other bits and pieces and there'll probably be a few more mistakes in it but generally speaking you can improve your bike by doing simple things like this. Um, so I think it's a worthwhile thing to do. Thanks a lot. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Goodbye.